ever feel like life's uh, like one big confusing party? Mm -hmm. We'll get ready to dive into that feeling, literally. Literally. Well, not literally, literally. Okay. But uh, today we're unpacking a blog post okay. called Ain't Nothing But a Party mm. from a site called Words See Made. And trust me, the name is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to thought-provoking weirdness. I can imagine. Yeah. What's immediately striking about this piece is how it uses such a simple concept like a party. Right. To explore these surprisingly deep questions yeah. about existence, meaning, and the human condition. Yeah, it's not your typical, like, how to throw the best bash kind of blog post. All right. This is a deep dive into the metaphorical heart of a never-ending celebration mm -hmm. and how one person navigates its twists and turns. Yeah, and it really makes you question, what does it mean to search for meaning right. in a place designed for pure experience? So picture this. Okay. You find yourself at a party not just any party. This one sprawls through a massive rambling house, room after room. Okay. And no one seems to know how it started or if it'll ever end. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did I get here? Right, right. And more importantly, how do I leave? Exactly. But for now, you're stuck. The author paints this incredibly vivid picture of the setting. Rooms overflowing with beautiful, strange things, some unsettling, some alluring. Uh -huh. There's an almost dreamlike quality to it, both enticing and unsettling. Right, like you're simultaneously drawn to the music, yeah. the laughter. The promise of something amazing, but also a little creeped out by the guy passed out in the corner. Yeah. The strange whispers, right. the feeling that something is just off. And that's where the genius of this piece lies, in that tension. Yeah. The author masterfully creates an atmosphere where joy and unease coexist. Right. Reflecting the complexities of, I think, life itself. Exactly. Take, for example, how the narrator describes his in initial encounter with Linda and Bill, seasoned party goers, mm. who are more than happy to show him the rope. Yeah. They're almost bragging about a brawl that erupted. Oh, really? Mentioning a guest who got shot twice. Oh, my goodness. Been hit twice. Wow. It's crazy. It's as if the author is highlighting the potential for chaos and darkness that yeah. exists even within the most celebratory environments. Yeah. This isn't just a party. It's a microcosm of the human experience where exhilaration and danger often go hand in hand. And what's even more intriguing is the isolation of it all. This party is raging, completely unnoticed by the outside world. Interesting. Nobody seems to care about the noise, the chaos. It's like this self-contained universe of experience, completely detached from consequence or even basic social norms. Which, if you think about it, is a pretty accurate reflection of how many of us experience life, at least sometimes. Oh, yeah. We get so caught up in our own little worlds, our own parties, that we forget about the bigger picture. The world outside our immediate experience. Okay, let's talk about Neil's outhouse adventure. I mean... A blizzard, Love confetti it. raining down. It's right. like even going to the bathroom at this party is a metaphor waiting to be unpacked. Absolutely. What seems like a comedic aside is actually a brilliant illustration of the absurdity we often encounter in life. Yeah. The unexpected blizzard, the out of place confetti. It's as if the author is saying, even when you think you're stepping away from the chaos, it has a way of finding you. And you can't ignore the hero's welcome Neil gets when he finally makes it back from the outhouse covered in confetti. It's like even the mundane struggles are cause for celebration at this party. Exactly. It speaks to that human need for connection, for shared experience, even or perhaps especially in the face of the absurd. We find meaning in camaraderie in the strangest places, even when the overall purpose remains elusive. And speaking of connection, enter June. For a moment, amidst all the strangeness, things settle into a more relatable rhythm. Our narrator finds himself drawn to her, and their interactions, dancing, talking, that stolen kiss, it's like a brief glimpse of normalcy in this surreal world. But even that connection, you know, as we'll see, can't fully escape the party's undercurrent of unease. Yeah. June brings her own friends into the mix, oh. Ethan and Sophie, okay. and their arrival kind of shifts the whole dynamic. Ethan especially, seems to possess a kind of clear-sightedness right. that challenges the party's intoxicating haze. Yeah. He's not content to just get swept up in the experience. Right. He asks the question yes. that's been lingering in the back of everyone's mind. Where's the host? 
It's such a simple question, but yeah. think about it in the context of this endless directionless party. It's like Ethan is cutting through the noise and asking, what's the point of all this? Who's in control? And that's where the real philosophical meat of the story comes in. Yeah. It's not just about finding a physical host. Right. It's about our innate desire to find meaning and purpose mm -hmm. in a world that often feels random and chaotic. You know, it's interesting because the narrator mentions that he'd been wondering the same thing about the host. Yeah. But he just hadn't voiced it. Yeah. It's like Ethan's question gives him permission to start questioning. Right. To look beyond the surface of the party. And the author doesn't let us forget about the party's darker side. Mm -hmm. Ethan points out the mess and the cellar. Yeah. These subtle reminders that beneath the surface of revelry, right. there might be something more unsettling lurking. Right, like that feeling you get when the music stops for a second. Yeah. And you suddenly become aware of the quiet murmur of conversation. Yeah. The spilled drinks, the faint sense of unease that was always there just below the surface. The story then throws in this almost mythical figure, Jesse. Oh, yeah. Who claimed to be the son of the house owner. Okay. Promising an even more exclusive after party. Mm -hmm. Of course, Jesse disappears. Of course. Leaving everyone wondering if the after party was ever real. It's like a cautionary tale about buying into empty promises, right. chasing fleeting highs, mm. always searching for something more instead of appreciating what's right in front of you. Exactly. It speaks to our tendency to seek external validation. Yes. To place our hopes for fulfillment in someone or something outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But what happens when that something turns out to be an illusion? So we're left with this question. Yeah. Do we keep searching for the host? Right. For that ultimate meaning or purpose? Mm -hmm. Or do we accept the party for what it is? Yeah. Embrace the chaos and find moments of joy and connection amidst the absurdity. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? That it is. And just as we think the story might offer some answers, yeah. it takes another unexpected turn. And then out of nowhere, the narrator just decides to leave. Yeah. It's like, wait, what just happened? The beauty of it, isn't it? I don't know if I'd call it beautiful. We're left with a sense of incompleteness. Yeah. Mirroring the open-ended nature of existence itself. Okay. It's like life, you know? We spend yeah. so much time trying yeah. to grasp the why of it all. Searching for meaning and purpose. Right. But sometimes the journey itself is the point. It's almost frustrating, isn't it? We're never given the definitive answer about the party's purpose. It is and it isn't. Yeah. If there's a host, if there's some hidden meaning behind it all, it's right. like the author is saying, life goes on regardless of your attempts to understand it. Exactly. Okay. The narrator doesn't fight the party. Yeah. Doesn't try to uncover all its secrets. Right. Doesn't demand an explanation. Yeah. He simply accepts it for what it is mm -hmm. and moves on. But remember that detail about the block construction. Yeah. The one built by guests who are long gone. It's like a tangible reminder of their presence, even though they're no longer there. And it makes you wonder, how do we leave our mark on a world that's constantly changing? It's a powerful question, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Does meaning lie in leaving a lasting mark? Or is it about the experiences we share, the connections we make, even if those connections are fleeting? And that brings us back to the title, Ain't Nothing But a Party. It's almost dismissive. Right. After exploring all these layers, it takes on a whole new meaning. Perhaps the party is a metaphor for life itself. Mm -hmm. Chaotic, unpredictable. Yeah. Full of fleeting moments of joy, sorrow, connection, and loss. Right. There might not be a grand plan, no ultimate host orchestrating it all. Right. <laughs> but within that apparent randomness, yeah. we have the freedom to find our own meaning, to connect with others, to create our own moments of significance. So what does this all mean for you, our listener? Well, it's not about giving you a definitive answer. No. It's about taking this metaphor. Yeah. This idea of life as a never-ending party mm. and seeing where it leads you. Consider this. If your life was a party, okay. what kind of party would it be? Good question. What would you celebrate? Who would you invite? And most importantly, how would you choose to experience it? And that's our show for today. We'll see you next time for another deep dive.